What's going on, my fellow Keto Lords? I hope everybody has had a thrilling and fright-filled spooktober so far, and I hope everybody has developed new psychological traumas that they'll never be able to shake off for their entire life. But every Halloween, I try to do at least one Halloween special type of video. And this year, since I now have a Discord chat and I'm watching a lot of new films, because of the blind recommendations. I thought I'd make a video of all of the horror recommendation winners from the Discord chat and talk about all the ones that I liked quite a bit and try to shed light on films that I think uh, deserve a bit more attention and are on the more obscure side and films that I think, especially a lot of you in my audience, would at least appreciate in a way. And if you'd like to get in on this Discord action, and talk with Kino Lords all across the globe. We got people from Australia. We got people from the UK. Um, we got people all across the United States. Um, if you want to just be a part of a really fun Kino community where we just talk about film and we talk about all kinds of shit, but mostly filmmaking and our passion of the art of filmmaking, um, feel free to join for $5 a month on Patreon. We also have movie nights every now and again where we all get together and voice chat and watch movies together. And we also have a weekly voice chat session every Saturday night where we all get together and talk about the blind recommendation of that week. So if that's something that interests you, please click the Patreon link that's down in the description box below and join for just $5 a month. I apologize for that embarrassing and shameless shill, but I would be an idiot to not seize on this opportunity. But without further ado, let's talk about the first film in this video, which is... <laughs> Three Extremes, which is a Asian horror anthology from directors Fruit Chan from China, Park Chan Wook from South Korea, and Takashi Miike from Japan. So Three Extremes was actually Perry's blind recommendation of last week, and the film I voted for, and it won, and I was really glad that it did. First of all, I did not know this film existed until Perry brought it to my attention last week, and I'm really glad that he was able to shed light on this film and uh, make it part of my own existence because this is a film that you would think I would hear about and you would think most people would hear about. And for the most part, I really enjoyed this film and I definitely think it's worth recommending and shedding light on. Um, again, it's a horror anthology and this is a legitimate horror anthology. Um, in my Trick or Treat review, I mentioned that some people consider that an anthology, but that actually has a plot line that kind of weaves together the the short stories that are within that film. This one doesn't. These are three completely separate short films. And the first one in this film, I believe it's called Dumplings, and is directed by Fruit Chan. And this is actually, in my opinion, the strongest short film in the entire anthology. Um, this is a film that I think is the most disturbing out of any of the films. And I feel like really goes further and is the most boundary pushing one out of any of the shorts as well. It's also the most beautiful looking film. Um, the cinematographer behind this film is Christopher Doyle and Christopher Doyle is known to be the cinematographer for most of Wong Kar Wai's films and everybody knows that Wong Kar Wai's films just look absolutely stunning and honestly Dumplings is no exception. Uh, the camera work throughout this film is quite phenomenal and it's directed quite nicely too. I liked certain artistic decisions um, that also have to do with the, the musical score in this film. Um, there's this one small choice that has to do with the fact that in certain moments where there's nothing obviously ominous and dark happening, you have this really intense horror music playing, but then in parts that are clearly twisted and very hard to watch and gruesome, you have really calming and peaceful piano playing in the background. And I think that sense of irony with the music uh, really elevated my experience and makes it more makes it that much more off-putting to watch. And this is quite off-putting. Um, honestly, I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of this video before talking about these films, but either pretty much every film that I'm going to talk about in this video, it's either heavy on the artsy side in terms of it just, you know, doing its own thing and... Um, being uncaring about audience expectation and just going all the way with their vision, or it's very boundary pushing and um, just goes really far with the more 
uh, disturbing concepts. So in regards to all the films that are going to be on this list, I really wouldn't recommend to anybody who's just looking for a fun, easygoing popcorn Halloween watch. But anyway, going back to the film, um, yeah, so Dumplings is the strongest. I feel like it has the, the most interesting concept and also has the more impressive execution throughout the film. The second film in Three Extremes, I believe is called The Cut, and this one is written and directed by Park Chan-wook, and this one is, to me, surprisingly the weakest one in this horror anthology. And I say surprising because Park Chan-wook, I think, is the most talented director out of all three of these directors. Um, I pretty much loved everything he's made, from The Handmaiden, uh, from Thirst, Old Boy. I mean, Park Chan-wook is a sensational Korean horror director. And um, it was a bit disappointing for this one to be the more mediocre of all three films. Um, but when we talked about this in the Discord chat, um, not everybody was in agreement with that. A lot of people thought this was either the best one or the second best. Um, it was kind of all over the place. It was the cut, I think, received the most mixed reactions. And I really have nothing wrong with a film conceptually. I think when it comes to its core concept, it's actually quite interesting. It's just in terms of execution and style, um, I really just wasn't a big fan of. The camera throughout the film, um, goes out of its way to be a bit flashy. It tries to go in and out of really tight spots, and it kind of reminds me of David Fincher's Panic Room, except I think it's more well incorporated and more purposeful in Panic Room, but here it feels just flashy for the sake of being show offy. And it didn't really do much for me. I mean, I guess it was cool to see it, but it just didn't really do much. And throughout the film, the camera work is kind of chaotic, and it feels like a lot of it just felt winged. Like they were just kind of making it up as they go along. And um, not to say that there really isn't good aspects of this. I think there are a few strong and effective scenes in this film. One of them has to do when the main character kind of uh, confesses his feelings towards his wife. And that was an interesting scene to say the least. And I thought it worked really well. And overall, the suspense works most of the time. It's just that there is some humor that's incorporated into the film that I also just think went too far. And um, just kind of takes you out of any kind of uh, suspense or any sense of taking anything seriously. And again, it's, it's unfortunate. Not that it's a horrible short film, but it definitely was the weaker one. And I guess I expected more out of a filmmaker like Park Chan-wook. But... You know, again, this is just my opinion, and it's quite possible that when you watch it, that it might be your favorite one. But those were just my feelings towards it. And the last film that you have in Three Extremes is called The Box, which is written and directed by Takashi Miike. And this is the second best one. This one takes a bit different of a horror approach. It's most certainly the slowest one. Um, I can see a lot of people finding issues with how slowly this film is paced. And I think that's valid. I mean, even for me, there were some scenes where I'm like, all right, I don't think it's completely necessary for characters to stand stationary for that long. But um, overall, I think the execution of this is really well done. I like the way that this film is directed. Um, I think the, the pace, even though it is slow, um, makes you feel like it does pay off to something as it moves from scene to scene. And I think honestly possesses the more scarier moments in the entire anthology. Um, this is one scene where in the first act of it, the main character walks up to an entity that has its back turned to her. And the way that scene is built is, um, very effective stuff. And then you also have the set designed with these flashback sequences that are not only stunning to look at, um, but really help you immerse into what this film is going for in terms of the atmosphere and the story. And when it comes to the third act of the film, it's it's mostly pretty good. Um, in terms of some of the horror that's presented in the third act, I think is very well done. Again, there's a scene, it's called The Box, and there is a scene that has to do with an, an entity peeking out of the box. And I thought the way that was captured was very effective and incredibly creepy. It's just that when you get to the actual ending of that film, it uh, it decides to try to throw a curveball at you. It, it tries to have this big revelational twist moment, and I really don't 
think it worked that well. I could have done without it, honestly. For me, it didn't really take much away from the effectiveness that I was witnessing prior. But uh, at the same time, it just um, it just kind of falls flat and it reaches too far in a way that um, I just don't think was necessary or even worked all that well. But overall, I do think it's a pretty good short film. And if I had to rate each one individually, I'd probably give the first one, Dumplings, a soft 8 out of 10. Uh, the cut directed by Park Chan Wook, probably a strong five, maybe a light six out of ten, more than likely strong five. Um, and then I would give the box directed by Takashi Miike a soft to solid seven out of ten. But as a whole, I would give the Three Extremes anthology a soft seven out of ten. And I do think that the, the anthology presentation, in terms of its structure and how they order these films, I do think it would have benefited from putting Takashi Miike's film, The Box, that is last on the anthology, and putting that in the beginning, and then putting Dumplings last. Because again, Takashi Miike's short, The Box, is it's very slow paced compared to everything else. And Dumplings and The Cut are pretty high energy. Um, so I think by the time you get to The Box, it just you're kind of just worn out, and a slower paced film doesn't really help, and I can see people just being more impatient with it just because of the fact of how the anthology is structured. But those are my thoughts on Three Extremes. That went on for quite some time, but it just, it's three short films, so I kind of have to talk about them as much as I can. But anyway, let's talk about the next film on this list, which is... I just realized I I forgot to put the wallpaper background for Three Extremes. I apologize, I'm a huge fuck up sometimes. Anyway, the next film on this list is Loose, which is a German horror film, and I would have not known about this film's existence at all if it wasn't for one of my patrons and subscribers, Josh, uh, or in the Discord he goes by the name Lil Soto, and he was really telling me to watch this film in preparation for this video because he had a good feeling that it might have made the list, and sure enough, it did. Um, I will tell you, though, this is not a film that... I am really all that in love with. I do like it and I did enjoy it, but it's really on this list because I feel like it's, it's a film worth recommending to everybody, especially if you love films that have these really slow paced refin esque style to it. The presentation of this film is by far the best aspect of this film, uh, in terms of the way it's edited, in terms of the way it's directed, the way that this retro 80s synth type score is incorporated into the film is amazing. I mean, the score for this film slaps. I mean, there's, there's no beating around the bush. It is an awesome score. I, I can see myself looking it up and just listening to it from time to time because it's, it's a really great score, in my opinion. And even the way that it is incorporated with some scenes is incredible. There's a moment in the first act um, with two characters in a bathroom and the way that the score is used there just blew my mind. I thought it was amazing stuff. And this is a very short film. This is a film that's only an hour and 10 minutes, really an hour and five minutes because there's like five minutes of credits. So even if you don't really end up enjoying this film all that much, you really only wasted an hour of your time. And it's funny because even though this film is short, it, it does kind of feel like it's too long, which is weird. But this does feel like a short film concept that was attempted to be stretched out into a full-length film. And I don't think there was really enough meat and story and character substance to really keep this film interesting. Um, I mean, the screenplay is by far the weakest aspect of this film. And unfortunately, it does kind of drag your experience down a bit. But again, luckily, just the way it's directed and the way that it's put together... Um, really makes it worthwhile, in my opinion, and makes it mostly engaging. Um, there are moments where, especially like in the second and some of the third act, where you have this hypnosis scene. And for half of that hypnosis scene, I think it works quite well, but it does get to a point where you're like, am I really that interested in what's happening here? Because it is quite confusing, um, even for somebody like me who watches a lot of, you know, abstract and uh, intentionally confusing and head scratching type of films uh, even this one for me like there was a lot of this film where i was just thinking to myself what 
what in the hell is actually happening right now? But conceptually, it's actually quite simple. And the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, this out, this is actually pretty damn simple. It's just this film is trying to convey a lot of the story elements um, and a lot of the character situations through, again, that visual and that editing style. And I can see that confusing a lot of people because it's, it's definitely, it's definitely trying to intentionally confuse the audience and make them think about what they watched. But I do warn you, this is a pretty sacrilegious type of film. I'm not saying that it condones sacrilegious behavior or anything, uh, but there is a lot of sacrilegious content in this film that even caught me off guard. But um, that was actually one element that I did enjoy the film because it made it that much more off-putting. It just made me admire that it was willing to go there with certain pieces of dialogue. But um, yeah, I would say overall this film is worth giving a try, but definitely not for everybody. I mean, it, honestly, it was it was barely enough for me. Um, but there was enough about this film that I think is uh, worthy every time. And if I had to rate this film, I would more than likely give it a solid 6 out of 10. But those are my thoughts in general about Loose. The next film on this list is... A Page of Madness, which is a Japanese horror film that came out in 1926. So this is a pretty damn old film. And, you know, I was expecting something to be, especially for the time it came out, something to be kind of standard um, in terms of how it's shot, in terms of how it's edited. But this film is pretty damn incredible and so far ahead of its time when it comes to how it's edited and how it's shot and how it's directed. Um, this is a film that I can easily label as an experimental art house horror film. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of elements of this film that reminded me of a David Lynch film. Um, just in terms of how rapid fire some of the editing choices are and how there are many pieces of imagery that are like dissolved and faded as they're like overlaid on top of each other. And the way that he's able to frame all that and put the images together for 1926 is unbelievable to me. I believe the filmmaker's name is Tionosuke Kinugasa. And this person is just, I, I admire this person so much because this film is filled with style. It's filled with filmmaking techniques that I did not expect to see. I mean, there's tracking shots in this film, and there's a lot of uh, quick rotating shots, and it just keeps going. There's, there's entire scenes where the film, where the camera will just rotate quickly and focus on something, and then rotate to something else and focus on it, and then it'll rotate really quick and transition to something so smoothly. And it's just so impressive for even even if a film like that came out today, I would be impressed and. Let alone this came out in 1926. It just, I don't know, it, it kind of blew my mind. Um, I'm not saying that this film is perfect. I wouldn't really go that far. But um, there's a lot about this film that I think a lot of film lovers and even horror fans could really enjoy and admire. The vast majority of this film takes place at a mental asylum. And there's this one scene that is just so chaotic and surreal that even though you're not necessarily fully grasping what's happening, you just really can't help but be enthralled by what you're viewing on screen. And um, in terms of being able to wrap your head around the plot and the story and even some of what the imagery is trying to relay, um, that that can, I feel like that's one of this film's strengths, but at the same time, it can be a little bit tiring in the sense that you just, you just want to be able to follow exactly what's happening in this plot and what's happening with characters. And it kind of goes for a long time to where you're not you're not really in that all that invested into the story and into these characters because of how you know unforgiving a lot of the storytelling, a lot of the visual storytelling is. And again, that's why I do classify this as experimental because, um, as I said, it's it's a pretty unforgiving film in terms of how it's trying to relay information to the audience. And the musical score that was made only like five or six years ago for this film is incredible. It's honestly one of the better aspects of this film as well, and that's saying a lot, because in terms of the filmmaking, this film is pretty damn incredible, but the score that they made recently for it is also insanely good. I think it was able to capture what the film was going for in terms of its atmosphere, in terms of the emotion through the music, and 
you know, it's a bit hard to watch a film and then interpret what you think a filmmaker was saying back in 1926 and, you know, make a musical interpretation of that. And I think they knocked it out of the park. But yeah, if I had to give A Page of Madness a rating, I would give it a strong 8 out of 10. But that's what I got to say about A Page of Madness. Now time to move on to the next film on this list, which is... <laughs> Borgman, which is a 2013 Northern European film that's written and directed by Alex Van Varmerdam. Um, I believe this is a Danish film, but I, when I look at the countries of origin, it just, it, it brings up Northern Europe, basically like the, the Netherlands and Denmark. But um, either way, Borgman was a film, it was actually my blind recommendation for the Discord chat and it won. And I was really happy to find out that uh, it turned out being a really impressive film. Um, but this is an odd one. This is definitely one of the weirder films on this list. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of strange, um, just confusing and really out there, bizarre films on this list. But this one is pretty damn bizarre. And um, not only with its concept, is it just really out there? But there's plenty of scenes in this film that are just intentional head scratchers. But... Um, even beyond that, what's interesting about this film is that as I was watching it, it it actually reminded me a lot of Parasite conceptually. Because conceptually, this film is about a lower class entity. I don't feel all that comfortable calling him a person in this film, and when you see it, you'll know why. But it's basically about this lower class entity that comes in and intrudes on this upper class family through psychological manipulation and basically just turns them inside out not literally but metaphorically but the interesting touch of this film is that it does dabble in the supernatural i mean what i really liked about the approach was that it wasn't overtly supernatural it's only kind of very vaguely implied through imagery and also how it shows you that these characters possess these otherworldly abilities that are definitely not scientific or down to earth and i really like that touch to this film because it really does add this mythological layer to it that serves as a cautionary tale and it comes off kind of folky and i thought that was a really interesting touch to the film because even though there are characters in this film that we can clearly uh see are just evil manipulators i believe they also served as a tool for the filmmaker to kind of make a commentary and expose the a lack of love foundation that some upper class families might have um because there's a lot of hints in this film that kind of show you that if there was truly a love bond that was binding everybody in this family um you know a sense of trust a sense of loyalty a uh sense of unconditional love and satisfaction with each other then perhaps nothing really tragic would have happened to the family and it's only because a lot of people in the family are just unsatisfied with their lives, even the children, that their weaknesses are easily exposed because there's perhaps an over-reliance on material wealth rather than emotional wealth. And I think that's why the entities in this film go out of their way to target more upper-class families. Because I've read a lot of articles on this film um, saying that this film is a tale about good and evil. And even though I don't necessarily disagree with that, I do feel like overall this film is a story about love or lack thereof. But either way, if I had to give this film a grade, I would probably give this a solid 8 out of 10. Alright, so we got one more film on this list. I intentionally saved it for last because it is my favorite out of all the blind horror X that I saw this month. And the film is... <laughs> Hagazusa, which is a film that came out in 2017 that's written and directed by Lucas Fagelfeld. Um, Hagazusa was once again one of my blind recommendations for the month of October and lucky enough it won and I was ecstatic at my reception and outcome of this film because um, this film really blew me away in a lot of different ways and I can see a lot of people saying that the the direction and the vision to this film in terms of how it's paced um, just really didn't do it for him. But for me, um, I found it to be incredibly engrossing. Um, 
very immersive because the aesthetic presentation of this film in terms of the direction of the camera work, the way that the score comes in and out of the film, the way that actors move and walk throughout the film, it just all feels incredibly delicate. And um, it doesn't feel like it's just being slow for the sake of being slow because that's what art films do. Um, it feels all incredibly intentional. And not only does it really just get you sucked into this film's haunting atmosphere, but it really does make it that much more creepier to where you can really feel every moment that's presented in this film. And one thing going into this film that I was a little bit concerned about was that it was going to be too much like Robert Eggers' The Witch. But I'm happy to say that it's really not. Like, I think it is clearly inspired by The Witch. But to me, this is certainly its own creation and its own monster. And one of the big differences between The Witch and this film is that Hagazusa intentionally kind of keeps its supernatural elements a lot more vague and in the background than The Witch does. And that's not a negative towards The Witch at all. It's just a different approach. But in terms of a difference that I did enjoy in terms of its artistic decision was that it keeps the more down-to-earth and real problematic social issues especially when it comes to expressing how inherently patriarchal religion is specifically christianity in this film and how it just goes to show you that this type of ideology has a negative effect on not only everybody but specifically women um there even beyond the main character which i'll get to in a second there's another female character in this film that is awful i mean she's deplorable but it's one of those things to where would she really be that deplorable if it wasn't for this Christian religion giving her brain worms? And I'm not saying that if you're a Christian, you have brain worms, but um, when it comes to a more fundamental approach and ideology, especially for back then, um, when you just had a gigantic lack of knowledge about the world, it just shows that it could be incredibly toxic and have a bad effect on a human being when it comes to the main character of this film she's just a perfect example of expressing the fact that the religious and cultural ideology that surrounds her uh the behavior of the people around her and the perception that society has on a woman like her who lives alone um just has a gigantic hand in creating the monster that they already perceived her as and through this we get so many amazing scenes. Uh, we get a scene that involves a rat in a creek. Uh, we get this incredibly well edited and incredibly well realized shroom trip scene um, to where it doesn't focus on the visual psychedelic elements of shrooms, but through the sound design and through the pacing and the direction, it, in my opinion, it really embodies the feeling that one would get when tripping on shrooms. And that scene alone sets up for such a beautifully shot and haunting and disturbing scene. And again, it's the vision of this film and the way that it's put together, the way that it's paced, the way that it's edited, um, I just found to be an incredible experience. But yeah, Hagazusa is a fantastic film. I really loved it to death. And if I had to give it a rating, I would give it a soft nine out of 10. Well, that's it, everybody. Those are the five uh, blind horror rex that I watched through the discord chat that I am really glad I watched and I do think that if you're somebody that loves the art of filmmaking and can handle boundary pushing content and uh, films that take again a more artistically risky route to filmmaking I think that this is these are the perfect films for you to watch before Halloween hits um we get, again, we have a whole week, so I think that's enough time to at least watch a few of these films. But anyway, that's that's my little Halloween video for October. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about all these films, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.